Hello everybody, Thomas Rona here and welcome back here to another League Racing video on this channel. Today we are here as you can see for PSL round number 3 at Britain. Oh as so you can see they're standing very quickly on your screen. We won last time round uh, at Imola, uh, getting a win in, in uh, wet conditions. So that was very very nice. Um, we were here for the first actual round uh, without a mystery track. So we knew the track beforehand. And uh, we could definitely uh, prepare ourselves to, um, to the best. Um, although I said that uh, this is my first key one lap um, on Britain since quite a while. Plus, it's uh, it's wet, and uh, I can tell you I haven't done any wet practice around there. And when you go out the very last minute when the track is at its best, uh, it's going to be very tricky to get through. Uh, you can see the lap has not been good so far, and um, just getting the line completely wrong yeah. through. Um, mm, this is horrible. Uh, love fields, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we are going to go again, as you can see, uh, with one minute left. Um, a bit early, I would say, especially knowing the track is going to be drying up towards the end of this qualifying. Uh, across the line, we go P18 at the moment, so we need to get a good lap in. Otherwise, we are not going to get through to the next part of qualifying. Uh, into World Turn 1, uh, third gear, getting the car down a bit better than the last time rounds, and getting to the apex as well for Turn 2 a lot better. And uh, you can just see the time gain. We uh, we just had four turns up, so definitely a lot better for the first part. Definitely not ideal still, but for now it's good enough to get ourselves through into the next part of qualifying. But through here, just once again turning into early, and not carrying enough apex speed uh, through this long, long right-hander. Uh, getting on the power pretty okay. As we are heading towards Cops now, session is about to end right now. Uh, Brendan Lee is already going to cross the line uh, to finish his lap. I think he's going to go P2 for now. Um, 12 seconds up, as you can see, the Delta is quite irrelevant at this moment. Um, again, just not confident at all in this type of conditions and getting it all wrong in the uh, Magus Rebecca Chapel. Nonetheless, still purple. Um, quite sure that is incorrect because that definitely didn't feel like a purple second sector. Um, through still we go, um, getting it pretty nicely and then in towards this last corner. Third gear, turning in a bit too early, so I had to counter steer a bit on the entry and uh, across the line we go going to be a 35244 which I thought oh was enough at the time but if we wait just half a minute we are going to see that it is going to be quite tough to get through you can see Avaro, Brendan and Shanaka are all finished um, but there are still everybody behind them on laps you can't quite see on the minimap but as you can see uh, both Rory jumpers, Patrick Seeple's jumpers it's going to be Luke Smith jumping us. Everybody is going to jump us. Daniel Bresnay goes P1 by four and a half tenths. Uh, Jan Altmer goes P2. Uh, Willi J. Benham is going to cross the lane as well and goes P3. Uh, Ismail Fassi goes P4 and we're already P11. P12. Oh God, P13. It's going to be very close if we're going to make it. P14, 15. And oh, um, God, yeah. Out in Q1 for the first time this season. And I think the first time on pure pace uh, on this game as well so definitely very unfortunate uh, oh, to start from P16 yeah, it was, mate. Uh, you can hear me say yeah, my child as well I wish it was the last of first really um, gonna make the most of it yeah you can even say we're gonna make the most of it and uh, see what we can do gonna be a fun one hopefully uh, Britain always uh, gets us a lot of chaos and uh, a lot of racing action so Five red lights and the way we go, not getting a great start I would say, um, still managing to slot in uh, behind these guys, as we uh, head in towards turn one I can already see Jet Nogrove is off the track, and um, a lot of contact in turn one, getting a warning there, um, I wasn't pushed up, but I certainly wasn't able to enter the track safely, uh, you can uh, see me right now as well. Making quite a little bit mistake, I would say, by using a bit too much battery. Uh, so that definitely costed us at least 5%. Oh, it's 
Danny. Oh, uh, Danny broke the sensor off the inside of both cars because he needs to make moves quickly as well. Because he is one of our championship rivals at this current moment. Uh, P14 at the moment, so two position gain on the opening lap. As we head into towards Cop Corner for the first time. It's going to be very tricky, of course, with Dirty Air uh, through these fast corners coming up. Maggots, Baggots, and then Chapel after this. Um, of course, practice for the race runs, so the race phase and the quality phase in the drive was certainly good. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't use it, so. Looking forward to see what we can do uh, with our race phase today. And uh, our race craft as well, going to be crucial to get through this pack as, uh, as soon as possible, basically. Uh, it's a, big, a bit of a pile up at the moment with uh, Barry and Isma having to slow down uh, from the cars ahead. Uh, putting a bit of pressure on both of them to see if they're going to make any moves in towards turn 1. Um, thought about it on Isma Fassi, but then uh, decided to back off and uh, try again in the next few corners. Uh, Isma is going to defend on the inside, so we're going to take the outside line, use our battery and slot in behind them. Uh, try and having a run in towards turn number four on Lovefield or Brooklyn's actually I think it might be Brooklyn's and then uh, in towards Lovefield now uh, Carl by inside, Danny Bereste thought about going for a move as uh, Ismail Fassi and Barry Borman going side by side at this moment and they are so quite, as you can see burning the batteries quite a lot uh, battery exceeds defending from Ismail Fassi but Ismail wisely sends it up the inside of, um, of Patrick Seaforce as I tried to go for a move on Barry oh, Borman and nearly spawn rounds. That was very, very sketchy um, in terms of contact model. Did not want to take too much risk, of course, as we have uh, at the championship rival with Dane Barres now going for the move in towards Stowe. Um, I don't oh, know what I'm happened old. here, but we uh, kind of got stuck together and. Um, I mean, guys, come on. I'm in the middle of these three Back cars. Off, Barry. Then it's time to stick it around the outside. And then I have Danny on my inside. Like, what am I seeing? Uh, up ahead, we have Esmo Fassi right now. Back to keep us on lap number five. Uh, gonna try and go for a move uh, on Esmo Fassi, but Esmo is also gonna go for a move on Patrick Seaforth. Going down the inside, in towards so. And Esmo Fassi is gonna make the move stick and uh, goes up to P11. We are going to try and go for the same move on uh, Patrick, but uh, fortunately for us, or unfortunately for us, as you'd say, we can make a stick. Uh, at this current moment, the soft tires are starting to fade away for Patrick, as we uh, very smartly actually turn our ERS on in towards turn number one, and we make the move up the inside oh, of Patrick. Warning. Unfortunately, we do get a warning. Uh, that is our second warning, um, unfortunately. Uh, we did get a warning, of course, on lap one with the incident uh, with all the cars uh, around us. So we need to be careful now if the uh, warning doesn't get removed, if we don't get another warning uh, in this race. Uh, lap number nine coming up, you see Patrick has overtaken us again uh, a few laps ago as we have. Also, the first people pitting, uh, Jan Oltmeyer, um, oh no, sorry, Jay Benham, sorry, uh, Alfie Butcher, and Tom Manley, I believe, pitted on this current lap, uh, lap number 10 out of 26, we're going to be seeing the first pistols now of course, with the soft runners pitting for, I would assume the medium tyres, because the hard tyres are pretty irrelevant around there, uh, in terms of pace, so we're going to try and line ourselves up for Patrick once again, because uh, Patrick's tyres are falling off the cliff, uh, moving on two laps later, lap 12, Patrick see what's up ahead, he's going to be struggling with the tyres he has, uh, same with, I don't know if that's Philip Presnader in the Aston Mine. Uh, I believe it is. Patrick is gonna, of course, not defend uh, in towards so, uh If he did defend, then it would have been quite silly because he is gonna pit anyway uh, in towards um, Vale, the last chicane. They're gonna be peeling into the pit lane. And uh, we need to try and catch Ismail Fassi uh, to see if we can get into the DRS. Luckily for us, Ismail Fassi um, didn't use any battery, or at least not much. Uh, we could quite easily get into the DRS again on lap number 13 of 26. Halfway distance now of this race. Uh, need to kind of work together now with the uh, Williams Eatable driver, Ismail Fassi. 
Um, why? Uh, of course, there are two like trains with, I think it's a train of 9 and a train of 11. So there's 11 people that side on the soft and uh, 9 people side on mediums. Or well, at least 9 people on the alternative strategy. I think a few people were in hearts in this race. Uh, there's a bit of a tie end advantage when we uh, pit. Uh, lap 14 is coming a lap, uh, closing the gap to Ismail Fassi, having a very healthy gap behind actually, uh, to Nani Beresne. Um, completely draining our battery here uh, to get past Ismail Fassi and be on the racing line in towards Luffield. Um, looking back at it, I, I don't know if it's more efficient to stay behind than us, uh, but for us working together in terms of efficiency and timing, uh, I think it was the right decision because right now Ismail Fassi can. Um, go for the move again into a stone, and that way we can sort of, for only two laps, work together, uh, as I said many times, to catch a train that is entering uh, sector 2 at the moment. They're going to be in a massive disadvantage, of course, if they're going to bow uh, in that train, as we are currently working together very nicely. It's not fussy, using a bit of battery to get fast, and he does the same thing as me, gets on the raising line, and... Um, by doing this, you can gain like a tenth and a half every time on the straights, and if you can do that like four laps in a row, then it can gain up to a second in race time. And that is very crucial to uh, have that advantage, as we have uh, Brendan Lee, uh, our teammate, pitting in now uh, on lap 14. Um, lap 15 out of 26, we are going to be boxing this lap. Uh, it's more fussy, um, leading the way for now still. Um, Need to try and go for a move again on him uh, this time around. Uh, we are, I would say, as close, but um, yeah, didn't go for the move and uh, save our battery a bit. And towards left field, uh, you can see faster slaps being thrown around red line, red, right, left, and center. Sorry, and um, you can see Brennan Lee uh, coming out of the pit lane, uh, not too far behind the uh, lead park. He was, of course, a few positions back from us in this train. Uh, so if we can slot uh, right behind uh, the Williams driver of Alvaro, I believe he's behind Brendan, then uh, it could be very beneficial for us. Uh, I think Alvaro was only the only guy that did hard medium in his race, uh, to have the medium for the end of the, of the stint. Um, so yeah, we're going to see if we can get past Esmar Fassier in towards So Danny Bresnay is going to go for the move though. It was so, but um, yeah, the size the back of it. I think we didn't use any battery uh, as well at entering the pit lane. Uh, Danny Bresnay is going to pit with us uh, on lap number 15. <coughs> um, that's also why he probably went for the move uh, heading towards the last corner with pit. Good stint, uh, made up a lot of positions. Um, need to try and make the best of it. Uh, Jay Benham, you can see, leading the train of the uh, old medium runners, 22 and a bit seconds behind. Pissed up around it, it's around 27, 28. So we are gonna be around five, maybe even six seconds behind uh, the lead at the moment. But that's okay, we're gonna have a, a tire advantage of uh, one and a half to two seconds in the opening two laps. And um, yeah, until the end of the race, we're pretty much gonna have a tire advantage uh, in towards the final lap, basically. The, uh, the only disadvantage we're gonna have though, is um, we still have two cars to overtake, including our teammates. Um, of course, we're gonna work together as teammates to uh, get through this pack as soon as possible. Uh, with only 10 laps left in this stint, moving on to the end of the lap, um, nothing happened, of course, as I try and um, save my tires a bit um, for when I want to uh, make the right move at the right time. You can see, uh, Brandon Lee sets fast left and then Alvaro Caraton takes it away. Um, of course, we have a much, much faster tyre. Um, and we're going to try and go for the move round the other side of Alvaro. Alvaro gives us just enough room, uh, having to counter steer uh, on the entry, making a bit of contact um, on the exit. Um, but Alvaro wisely uh, thinks better of it. Uh, Danny Beresley, lucky for us, is still a position back. Um, so that's going to be very beneficial for us if we can uh, make the right move at the right time. You can see it pushing, pushing Jet Nogrove. Um, out of Luffield, friendly, 
uh, enjoying himself out there, uh, making a lot of moves very quickly. Uh, couldn't quite take the racing line there, uh, unfortunately, Jed uh, stayed on the racing line. Danny Bresna is going to go for a double overtake in towards Tone. And he's going to be right behind us, heading in towards this way. You can see there's so many cars up ahead. Um, we need to try and make moves very quickly now, because we have a big, big tyre advantage. In towards Tone we go, uh, they're going to be side by side, Nicholas Longo, Luke Smith. We're going to take advantage of this and go down the inside and make two moves in one corner. Uh, breaking very late though, uh, you can see Patrick um, breaks a bit early, Luke Smith uh, hits us uh, on the exit as Brendan Lee now goes through into P5 already, um, so he's made a lot of good progress, he's now behind uh, Jarno, but as you can see Oda Lawrence gets off the track and we need to completely avoid him, otherwise there would have been a big big shot for us, um, unfortunately for us that definitely cost us uh, at least two three positions. Uh, it's just very unfortunate timing, to be honest. Um, you'll see at the, end, at the end of the race as well, uh, with Danny Breton ahead of us, it's going to be uh, a big, big uh, game changer in this one. As Brendan Lee now into P4 in this race, he is going to be fighting for the victory, of course, today. And um, yeah, I need to make some moves quickly once again uh, to even have a chance of a top five, possibly. Maybe even a top three if we get lucky. Um, it's just how it just depends how uh, easily we can get through this traffic. You can see Patrick Tippers wisely backs off in towards Magus, Vagus, and Chetpol. Um Going to be saving our battery, I think, on the exit of this corner. As Patrick Tippers is, of course, not going to go for a move at this moment. Danny Berethne, though, up to P6 now. And he is going to be making moves very, very quickly. Because he is in a hurry, uh, like we are, and uh, like everybody is. Um, of course, going to be tough to get past them. Uh, need to make uh, some very important moves very quickly, obviously. Try to go for a sort of through the Hamilton move, uh, but didn't quite work uh, on the exit. They didn't have a, a good enough of a run. Uh, in towards turn one, uh, Philip Resnade is going to defend, I believe it was Philip Resnade at least, making a bit of contact in the entry. Uh, but that's okay, um, pushing him a tiny bit wide offline so we can get the best run possible and uh, we are clear right now in towards uh, the second sector of lap number 19 still 8 laps to go or 7 laps to go in this race and um, still a lot of things gonna happen of course uh, we can definitely be fighting for the victory today if we can uh, make some moves quickly uh, Jan Altmeer let us through in towards though as he didn't want to fight in towards um, the end of the race of course with him having worse tires than we have. Frederick Rasmussen is up next. He is a very hard guy, uh, very hard guy to get past. Um, so it is going to be tough to catch the top three. Uh, Danny Beresne of course um, in P3 at the moment. He is going to try and go for a move um, in towards though. They're going to be nearly three wide. Heading in towards it, uh, Brendan Lee up ahead, um, drop it to P4, he is going to try and help us out. In towards the last chicane, um, yeah, pure team camera to this, Brendan breaks a bit early uh, to hold up Eric Rasmussen, we go around the other side, and that's us up into P5 in this race. Left 20, out of 26, still 6 left, uh, left to go as Otis Lawrence now retires from this race. Um, yeah, P5 at the moment, we're still two old medium runners up ahead. So they are going to be, of course, a lot slower than we are uh, in terms of tyres. Uh, Danny Beres now up next. It's going to try and go for a move on Jay Benamir. Um, unfortunately, he didn't make it stick for him. Um, Brendan Lee is now going to go for a move of oh, Danny Beres now, as he uh, gets us a toe here in towards the third corner we go. And we are going to be going side by side. In towards the last corner, still blocking Barry so he doesn't get through us. We unfortunately have to go around the other side and um, leaving this place of course for Brent on the exit to have a, the best run possible. Fortunately for us, or unfortunately sorry, uh, Barry got a very good exit and just about squeezes through ahead of Brendan Lee. The leader is only four times away at the moment. Um, so if we can get past Danny Beresna here. The victory is well and truly on, so we need to try and go for a move round the other side. Unfortunately for us, we just don't quite have the run 
that we uh, should have had. Uh, Daniel Bresnay is going to go for the move now uh, in towards the second sector of lap 20, world lap 26. It's been a long race. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it so far. It's been uh, a very nice one to watch, especially looking back at it. And um, yeah, going to be trying our best to get Bass, uh, the hardest for driver of RV Butcher. Um, going to try our best. You can see making a good effort actually. That is uh, five laps skipped because nothing happened unfortunately um, in this uh, last five laps. Jay Burnham pulled away from uh, Dane Bretton on the last lap so he could uh, break the toe and um, eventually get the victory today. We are going to try and go for a move on RV Butcher still for B3 in this race. Um, just unlucky for us, we didn't get it on track. Fortunately for us though, RV Butcher had a penalty uh, before this race uh, from the last race out in Imola. So that's going to gain us very much take a P4. one more position and uh, oh, get P3 don't, in this uh, race today from P16 on the grid. Um, very good race, very much enjoyed uh, this race today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe once again, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao.